From 2020 to 2022, rents increased on average 27%. That's 9% rent increases per year on average. Very unlikely. That's two and a half times the normal rent increase average. So this is an unprecedented time that we've seen in the last three years. Okay. And then I pe peeled back a little bit more. What's happened over the last 10 years in Jacksonville? And average rents have increased 51% over the 10 years. So, of course, that comes out to about a 5% rent increase on average per year. Got it. So the last three years, it's gone up a total of 27%, which is an average of 9% per year over the last three years, super mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. Over the last 10 years, it's gone up 51%. So if I bought uh, something that the rent was 100 bucks a month, 10 years ago, today it's 150 bucks a month, mm -hmm. right? So, and the average rent increase has been 5%, so higher than that like 30 year average mm -hmm. so far. So we've been at an elevated period of increased rents in Jackson. Exactly. Okay. What else? Well, then I said, okay, let's look at this from all perspectives here. And the first perspective that I want to look at this is through the investor lens. Okay, if you are an investor who bought a rental property with JWB in 2020, what does life look like right now knowing that rents have gone up like this? Okay. So that's what I did. I pulled a, a property that, a, a real property that was purchased by a client in 2020. It's here on Lucent Drive on the west side of Jacksonville, one of our four core neighborhoods. And we'll look at the numbers here of what did we say was going to happen. And then as we saw this outsized rent growth, how is that affecting this client's uh, cash flow? So before we get into that, GC, you always like to tell everybody a little bit. Something. I do, especially when we have new folks like Agnes joining and whatnot. It's always good for you all to do your own due diligence. I'm going to share some numbers with you to help you to illustrate some points here. These are estimates only. They are not guaranteed. This is not financial advice. You should do your own due diligence. We're not financial advisors. Okay, let's look at it. And here we go. So if we go the year 2020, when this client purchased the home, the rent was $1,075 per month. That's the gross monthly rent. You take out all the expenses that come along with it, like maintenance costs, vacancy costs, your mortgage payment, property management costs, all of those associated costs. You, you take all that out. And this client purchased this property expecting about $85 a month in cash flow. Right Now, hopefully when you look at that number, you look at that and you say, hey, well, that's awesome. 85 bucks a month. There's not many assets that put some positive cash flow in my pockets every single month. But what you, many of you, especially as newer folks might be saying, well, that's not a lot. You know, that's not a lot. And you're right. Cash flow year one is not going to change your life. It's not the reason to get into this investment. If you're curious about more than that, you can go to any of our videos on YouTube and we talk about the five profit centers. You know, Prop, net rental income, when you buy the property, make sure it's cash flow positive. But the beauty is what happens years down the road as the cash flow grows mm -hmm. for when you really, truly need it. And guess what? We had a spike in rents. Rent prices spiked more than they ever have in a three-year period of time. I didn't know that was going to happen. But this client certainly has benefited from that, just like you have benefited from that and all of you who have bought properties in 2020. So this client's property now rents for $1,461 a month. Mm -hmm. You take away all the costs that have come along with that as well. And he's left with net rental income of $215 a month right here, right now. Uh, for an average difference of $130 a month of net rental income, which when you put that out to a, a year, that's $1,500, $1,800 a year of additional net rental income which he wasn't assuming would be here day one when he bought that property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look at that and I think, all right, maybe I'm thinking that this cash flow is going to pay for my cell phone bill month month after month, or maybe YouTube TV or something like that. Yeah, it. but it turns out it's paying for my car insurance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? sure. So like, that's a, that's a nice little bump. There you go. It's, it's nothing that's going to change your life, but the important thing is get this asset and it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. And then it does change your life at some point here soon. Something else to consider here. You know, I often hear on the show great questions from clients and they might say, well, hey, listen, my property taxes went up, right? What should I do about this, right? Or my insurance costs have gone up. What should I do about this? And what I'm very quick to point out is, yes, that has happened. It's happened on your properties. It's happened on your properties, I'm sure. But we need to take into perspective what all is happening to see if we're winning. And so this client example here is very representative for all of you too. Because in this example, 
his taxes went up from $1,620 when he bought in 2020 mm -hmm. to $2,741 2, in 2023. Yes. So it went up for the year. It went up about 1100 bucks. Yes. Okay, got it. Right? So that's an additional cost that's taken into account there. Mm -hmm. Property insurance increased from $623 to about $1,500. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those additional costs are there, but we're not fully understanding how much rents have gone up. Mm -hmm. And when you take into the account, account the additional costs from taxes, insurance, and other costs along the way, mm -hmm. many times it's more than offset by the rental increases that you've seen. And I want everybody to see that because when that happens, that's how you get to that net difference of call it $1,500 or $1,800 a year of additional net rental income, taking those things into account. That makes sense. So you are, you're having, you have costs that might go up and you feel that, but you're also having your cash flow, your revenue go up that can offset those costs. And then on top of that, as we know here on the Nontra Average Investor Show, the majority of wealth we're going to build over time is the appreciation of the home. And that's been going up extraordinarily, oh, yeah. which dwarfs everything else, right? Yeah. $81,000 of home price appreciation for this client on Lucent. Yeah. So you're winning on a net rental income basis. You're really winning on wealth accumulation when you get to the other profit centers. Makes sense. And then that's the last three years, right? But then there's also the idea that, hey, we're in here, we're long-term investors here, right? So it might have only gone up, you know, it, it, it might have gone up 180 bucks per month in the first three years, but by year 10, this property is going to be at $530 per month in positive in more rent. Mm -hmm. And then in year 20, it's going to have a thousand bucks per month in more rent. Mm -hmm. In year 30, it's going to have another 700 on top of that. So $1,700 more per month. Um, so this again is an asset that's going to, and this is based on what assumptions you see, is this like that 3% going up or? Yes, this, uh, well, this is based on 3.7% going up year over year over year for mm -hmm. rents, like we talked about. Yep. But what it also includes is expecting property taxes and insurance costs and other costs as well to be going up. So this is the net rental income 10 years from now of what this client should expect from this home or 20 years or 30 years. And when you start to see $1,700 in net rental income coming for just one asset, that's where it starts to get life changing, Super right? Or you stack this with properties, a portfolio is like three properties in a portfolio or five or 20, like some of our clients have. Yeah. And now you're seeing the life changing effects of owning rental properties. Plus your net worth having gone up astronomically, because now we're talking about that home price appreciation. That's really just like a number that again, completely dwarfs all this exactly. stuff exactly, and everything that that comes with. Right. So that's rent growth over time. In the short run, we're looking at this, GC, can you explain this? Yeah, so a common question is, well, rents, can they continue to go up? There's been this huge spike in rents. What are the experts expecting? And this is from John Burns Real Estate Consulting. And John and his team put together projections for what they expect each market rent to go up as well as the US overall. And the experts are expecting rents to continue to rise, especially in Jacksonville. And so I put here in 2024, they're expecting 4% rent growth. Same thing in 2025 and 2026, they're actually expecting 4.8% rent growth here in Jacksonville. And that's more than what the U.S. is expected for rent growth as well. But it's noticeable here, the U.S. is expected to go up in rent as well. So get used to rents yeah. going up. It's happened 97% of the years in the past for Jacksonville. It's a normal part of the process. So rents going up is a normal part of the process. It's the idea that the U.S. economy is growing. There's going to be inflation happening, period, right? What I'm seeing beyond these numbers here, GC, are two things. One is we talk a lot about the show about how Jacksonville is special and how it is a city that is still underpriced and it's going to grow at a faster rate than other cities around it, and particularly with downtown coming back on. And it looks like if I look at our expected rent growth and the U.S. expected rent growth that John Burns agrees. Well, yeah, but John's not even really clued into what's going on in downtown Jacksonville. These these reports are based on not that insider knowledge than we talk about here. So I would look at that as significant upside over what we see here. Okay. And then the other thing that I'm seeing here is it feels like if I look at the idea that over the last 30 years, it's been... 3% rent growth. And over the last 20 years, it's been five, 10 years, it's been 5% rent growth. 
And Burns is expecting over the next three years to be at 4% and 4.8% after this like period of like crazy 10% plus. It feels like we're almost at a new normal, right? Like I know that you guys, I know that you guys like to be very conservative in your data. And in those projections that you just shared, you're saying 3.6%. But there's definitely a possibility here that rent growth in Jacksonville over the next 30 years is going to be higher than the last 30 years on average. Yeah, certainly possible. We build these expectations knowing that we want to under promise and over deliver. So a lot of opportunities to deliver better returns, more rent growth is certainly one of them. Okay. All right. So this is the party for investors, yeah. right? Investors love seeing these numbers because what it means is everything that we talk about, this is an asset that you invest in that gets better over time. Like a fine wine. Yep. Right. And even in your late stages of your life, when you really need this cash flow and you're actually living off of it, that still continues to improve as opposed to maybe other asset classes where you just kind of build up to a certain amount and then you get a withdraw from it and become very, very conservative and it might go up and down. Right. That's what we're in it for. Yep.